In Python, we can store pretty much any kind of data we want to inside of list. In fact, we can even make lists of other lists in Python. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. So to follow along, we want to create a lesson uh, 10 pi file and either open it up in idle or your favorite text editor. I'm going to use Notepad++. So what I can do here is I can create a new uh, list called values and I'll just set it to an empty list. And now that I have the list created, I can add values to it. The easiest way to do that is to use the append function. And so I'll append, but this time instead of adding like a word or or a letter or a numerical value, any kind of primitive data, I'm actually going to add a, another list object. So here I can go one, two, three, four. And I can also append again. And I can say five, six, seven, eight. I'll leave it like that. And just for good measure, let's add two more lists. So just like before with the append function, I'm creating a new position in the list and adding uh, my values in there at the same time. The only difference between this and what we were doing before is in this case, I'm adding a different kind of data. It makes things a little bit more complicated, but it's not that difficult once we get started. So to give you a visual of uh, what this actually looks like, we can just print values and button hit F6. And you can see here, it works the same just as we've been with the append function. So we start out with the first statement. Uh, we add a new position to the list and it's called and it's at uh, position zero. And you see my one, two, three, four is here at position zero. Then I go to position one and add the five, six, seven, eight, position two and position three. So it's just like any other data, but we can actually reference uh, these values here with an index as well, just like we can with the other list. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I could also print and I could take values at position zero. And then I could, the value, values at position zero is another index or is another list that has an index from zero to three and it has these values inside it. So I could actually uh, call a two right here. So values at zero is a list that has its own set of indices and I could call two. So I'm going to the values, the, 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 I'm going to values at position zero and then I'm taking the list that there, that's there and I'm going to two inside of the list, which should give us a uh, three. So let's see. If I run it here, you can see that prints out the three. And I could also go to uh, position two here and position three within that array. And that would say zero, one, two. So this is uh, my values at position two. And I have this index. And if I go zero, one, two, three, that should give me back 12. And you can see that prints out 12 for me. So when we create a list of lists like this, it's often referred to as a two dimensional list. And this is because we can use a list of lists to uh, represent values in a two dimensional grid. And to show you how that works, we need a nested for loop. And the best way to visualize how this is working is I'm going to have a spreadsheet out here uh, with you and I'll show you how the values actually go in. So let's start with uh, our first for loop. So it's going to be a range. So I'm going to say for I in range and I'm going to go from zero to the length of values. And then I'm going to nest another for loop inside there and I'm going to use J as my variable this time. And then I'm going to say J in range, uh, from zero to 
to uh, length, so to the length of values at position i. So the way this is going to work is our um, values list has a list of indexes. And they're just little uh, slots that hold data values for us, which we've covered before. Now, in each one of those, so at position I, there is another index. So there's another list inside there. So this actually is the outer loop. Uh, and this loops through. Uh, the list and the inner loop actually loops through the list at position i so the inner loop basically handles each line in the grid and the outer loop handles the columns. So actually, I could probably just say columns and rows. So if we're setting up a 2D grid uh, with our 2D list, then this outer loop will handle the columns and the inner loop handle, handles the rows. And that's not going to make a ton of sense right now, but as soon as we get into it, it will. I'm just explaining it to you as we go along. So inside of the for loop, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to set some output. So what I'm going to want to do is inside here, I'm going to set up a variable called output. And I'm just going to get it into an empty string. And then each time this loop happens, I'm going to add uh, the value at uh, values i, j. Um, I'm going to add those to output. But the problem is that that value is a number. And so I have to cast it into a string in order to be able to add it to output. And then it's probably a good idea for me to add like a little uh, maybe a tab or a space there as well. And then since uh, print automatically returns a line, I can put that outside of the inner loop, but inside of the outer loop. So I can put this print statement just inside this outer four. And I can just say print output once I've once I've developed the output for that line, I can say print output and uh, it'll print that for me. So I'm going to run this really quick. Let's see how it goes. And I forgot to uh, print to see there. So hopefully uh, we'll get that. And so you can see here that our grid printed. Uh, let's get rid of some of these really quick so that we can see what we're doing. And then I'll rerun that. And then we're left alone with just our grid. So let's see how this got created. So if you saw before, and uh, let's go ahead and print values as well. So we can see the two different ways that it prints. So you can see here, this is what our list actually looks like in reality. This is position zero. So if I, when I go to print this, I can say, I can use this range and I'm starting I at zero, which gives me this list. And so then I'm adding this output and it's setting over to uh, an empty string. So I'm going to add to that output using the iterator J now. So inside of values at position I, which I is now zero, I'm going to iterate J up and I'm going to call the index J on values at I. 
So we're starting off i is equal to zero and j is equal to zero. So this is the list at value zero and there's an index zero inside that as well. So that's going to be my one and that's going to be the first thing that gets added to output. Then i is going to stay the same and we're going to this loop is actually going to complete first before the outer loop. So I'm going to loop all the way through an entire line here using uh, J. So J is now up to one. So I'm still values at zero. So I'm using this, but now I'm using position one. I'm grabbing the two and I'm adding that to output. Then I'm iterating J forward one more time. I'm going to, or two more times, I'm going to uh, position two here. So zero, whoops, I dragged that over a little bit. So we're started at zero, then we went to one. Now we're at two. So we're still at uh, zero for I. So values at zero at position two, which is this three, and that gets added to output. Then J goes around again one more time. I go to position three. So still at position at value zero, but now I'm at position three, which gives me a value of four that gets added to output. Once that loop exits the first time, I'm going to print the entirety of output. So this line gets printed out. Output is now equal to, this is what's inside output. Then we print output and it prints uh, this line. Then what happens is, uh, this loop exits and then we go back uh, to the outer loop and I gets iterated one forward. So now we're going to be looking at the list at position one. Since I is now one, we're going to be looking at values at one, which is this list here. Then we're going to do the exact same thing that we did. We're going to take each value out of this list using J and we're going to add it to output. We're going to print the output, which we did. And then we're going to iterate I forward once again and go back to the outer loop. And I is going to be equal to two. So we'll skip to uh, values at position two, which is this list here. And then we'll go through each item at that list, add it to output and then print it out. And so, so on and so forth until the entire grid is printed. So now with all these things commented out, you can see I just have my plain old grid there. Now if I'm just printing, I can also just use a an enhanced for loop. So I can say uh, for value in values. And it makes things a little bit easier. I am still doing my output and I'm going to set that equal to uh, an empty string. And then I'll say for num in value. And I'm going to set output, I'm going to add, and I'm going to still cast a string, but I'm going to add num to it, and I'm going to add a tab, and I'm going to print out, output, and then so, and I'll add some labels to these. And then I'll also add some new lines to uh, clean it up. So I've just gone through and I've added some labels and some new line characters in here to kind of format everything and make it look good before I print out. And I accidentally added a plus sign instead of a comma there, but I think we're good to go. So now you can see this is what the original list looks like. And uh, using a range, I was able to create this uh, grid format. And I can also create it a little bit more simply uh, using the enhanced loop. So those will be up online and you can take a look at them as you see fit. And that's how you set up uh, a basic 2D list.